Hi all, welcome to stage two of ISO training. We're moving into boot camps, uh, mini boot camps as of Saturday. We felt it best to uh, put the process on video. There are a lot of rules and uh, protocols. They're not our rules or protocols, they're the government's to help us keep safe. Uh, we want to ensure that um, we're the club that leads the way and that we don't fuck up um, this and, and cause an issue for, for all of rugby. But most, most importantly, again, that we lead the way and that we seize the day. So jumping straight into it, there's quite a process and that starts before you get to the ground. Uh, in the morning, you've got your daily health check. If you don't do that, you'll not be allowed to train. You need to download the uh, COVID Safe app and make sure Bluetooth is turned on. That's compulsory. Uh, again, that's one of the government protocols. Uh, you need to know your groups uh, and the times that they are training on Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, if you turn up late, you won't be allowed into the ground and there's no swapping into other groups on the night. Please make sure you understand that. Again, that's a protocol so that we can trace uh, should there be a health issue. Once you arrive in the car park prior, you need to fill in a COVID uh, questionnaire, COVID-19 questionnaire. Jared will explain that in a little bit. Then you've got to make sure that you've got all of your equipment, straps, uh, drink bottle with water, uh, in a plastic bag, um, which you'll carry around, boots, cleats, joggers, whatever you need, in a bag with you from station to station. The, uh, the plastic bag, guys, is so we can disinfect stuff. Um, it's just got to be accessible, so it can't be a backpack. You can bring a plastic tub if you want, just not a backpack or a sports bag. Self-strapping. Uh, unfortunately, Jock um, can't strap you. You'll have to self-strap. Uh, self that will be in the car park at a table, all whilst keeping social distancing. Start time, which is on the grid. I'll send this checklist out to you um, tonight. Also, uh, you will line up keeping social distance and you'll get your temperature uh, checked. That will go into Team Builder also. Uh, lastly, there will be no change rooms open. You need to get in, train, get out. Uh, it's essential that there's no congregation before training or after training. Again, there are neighbours around the ground that will uh, dob us in if we're doing the wrong thing, unfortunately, but we, don't, we want to be the ones that lead the way. If I just open up my own profile, this will be the same for any South player, manager, coach, Anyone that wants to enter the ground on one of these training days will go through this and we'll have to create a profile for anyone, which I'm on top of. There's your regular health check that you have been doing every morning. Body weights are relevant to what we're talking about. COVID-19 symptom check is very similar to the health check with a couple of extra questions there. Have you been overseas? Have you been in contact with someone who's been diagnosed? So that will be done in the car park before you get out of your car. So if you do answer yes, you can leave the ground and go straight to the hospital for a check without coming in contact with anyone. Your temperature will be entered there on the gate with a manager with a uh, contactless thermometer taking your temperature. You'll enter that. If that's over 37.5, you will not enter the gate. You'll turn around and go back to your car and straight to hospital. And then we are into our regular pre-training process where you've got your screening that will be under the marquee. There'll be a student there to help you go through that if you need. There'll also be an attendance checker, which is a student as well in the same area as the screening. So we've got all those boxes checked that if anyone asks a question about how we're training, are we compliant? We can say, yes, we are. Here's all the information to prove it. Uh, whilst we're doing all of this in the marquee, uh, we will need to maintain safe uh, social distancing as well. And that applies yep. to the whole training. Yep, and there will be, I've got a, uh, a distance checker that'll be in two metre intervals that we'll have laid 
laid out. So when you're lining up waiting to get to the thermometer and get to the screen equipment, it's really, really clearly marked where you can stand, how far you have to be, just like it is at Woolies and Bunnings and everywhere else at the moment. Next step from there will be to proceed to the allocated warm-up areas. They are in the in-goal area. They will be clearly marked. There they are to do. So you've got two components, as we always have with training. There's an Essential 8. There's going to be a special ISO Essential 8 that uses no equipment. So it's just you and your body weight with a bit of grass. And there'll be a warm-up again with zero equipment and to do both your essential eight and your warm up, you're going to have a two by 10 meter patch of grass that only you will be in. And again, that will be socially distanced across the in goal area. From there, you'll be called on to field one and two or zone, zone A and B that we're calling them from the in goal areas or the area marked um, to start your conditioning. Throughout this station process, and even at the screening process, any equipment you use will need to be cleaned and there'll be cleaning equipment there. So for the squeeze test, that will need to be cleaned each time. Um, same with bands are used, uh, balls, all of those types of things for every rep. Okay. Uh, conditioning will be pretty straightforward. You'll need to follow the instructions of the coaches. Uh, and we're operating on around about an 18 minute turnover so it's 18 minutes of work and then move quickly through the designated paths keeping two meters social distancing uh, as you uh, transition to the next station the next station is sprawling that will be predominantly with myself and another coach there'll be two groups will join there but have two separate spaces to do a series of both uh, rugby functional movement um, as well as some uh, mixed martial arts movement. Um, that will be fun, boys, so be ready. Uh, like we said, you needed to be strapped prior to training, shoulders, ankles, knees. Um, you need to self-strap. That will be in the car park. From there, uh, you will move by the transition paths, which is all one-way traffic through to skills and under the instructions and the, uh, very definite. Uh, space areas from there. Then you'll move in a one-way direction, designated path, all the way around the western end of the tennis courts, uh, keeping social distancing with your equipment, uh, your own equipment, drink bottles and whatnot, into the car park, gym, and also the gym at the side of the clubhouse, again, in your two groups. Do you want to just explain about um, the gym process there, Jared? Yep. So there'll be two separate spaces, both outdoor training areas for your groups of eight. One will be in the car park. We'll be roping off some of the spaces adjacent to the, the back shed gym area. And then there'll be another space inside the gate for another group of eight to train so we'll have our equipment out there, all spread out for you guys to lift. It'll be heavy, it'll be a single key lift each day, and we're trying to get that real good quality training back in, but we have to make sure we're wiping down every bit of equipment we touch after every set. So you do a set of 10 squats, you get out, you wipe the bar down, you get out the way, well clear of the next bloke in, and they will then go through their set, follow the same process. That will be the same uh, skills, washing the balls, washing the bands, any equipment. We're not allowed to use uh, hit shields. We're allowed to use tackle bags. How they differentiate between that, I don't know. But at the end of the day, guys, we've got to seize the day here. Uh, and this is our first step. We don't want to be the ones that f fuck this up. We want to be the ones that lead the way. And I can honestly say our measures are up there with the professional teams. Uh, and we want to make this work so that we're back quicker. We have two training sessions in our mini groups. I'd suggest this is probably going to go for about four weeks. And we need to take every opportunity as Seize the Day states. Um, the zones will be clearly marked with some uh, white rope cloth. Um, 
if you get injured during the session, you need to leave immediately. There's no uh, assessment at training. You'll need to text Jock, make the coach that you, uh, station you're on aware and leave immediately. Guys, it's going to be quite strict. It's a, it's a change. I'm, I understand that, but this is, uh, we got to relish this. And really, um, we've been eight weeks now, not been able to do a whole lot. Uh, the only thing I'll add to that is for those of you that have GPS units, for now, it's going to remain DIY. You bring it in, you do all the work yourself. That will change, but not immediately. If you're one of the guys that has a unit and for whatever reason, you don't have a computer, you don't have the right technology, now's the time to bring it back and then we can start using them properly once everything settles down a bit more. I just want to touch on a point. There's been some talk about um, our training by ourselves. It's very hard to train by yourself or in pairs and to push each other. Often we'll take shortcuts and I understand that. That stops now. So we'll, we will be testing Broncos. Uh, we will be testing uh, fatigue, fresh. We would, we'll be testing the beak test. There will be no cheating on that. And from this point on, everyone will be held accountable. Um, so the key thing here is to make sure that you're improving as an individual, that you're competing with each other, but more importantly, you're competing with yourself and uh, trying to better your times, better your conditioning. So in four weeks' time when we get to rugby, all we do is rugby and uh, tactical, more than tactical. So a bit of patience, but a bit of fortitude as well uh, is required. I don't expect Saturday to run perfectly. That would be unreasonable. But I do expect all of us to turn up with a great attitude uh, and, and, and rip in and really um, enjoy uh, either conditioning or skills with um, with a, a small group. Okay, there will be no contact allowed. There's health protocols or government health protocols. Um, and again, I want to stress: there's no congregation before training. It's get in, train, get out. Uh, showering facilities. You'll need to go home to do that, um, and don't congregate in the car park after training, as we move the groups through fairly quickly. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Like you said, it's just get excited that we can actually see each other again, even though we can't get close to each other and train as a group again. That's unreal. Yeah. Now we're going to get, we're going to crank up the music on in, in as many parts of that as we can. And we're going to go for it guys. So we got a, we've still got a season that season's shaping to be a little bit earlier now, 18th of July. It's been um, drafted forward now. So uh, let's rip in and let's be the club that sets, sets the tone as we have done. So I'm very proud of where we're at. Uh, now's the time to really lift our, lift our targets, lift our standards and, and get back to it.